In Los Angeles, California, we're the Mad Scientist Party Hour. friends welcome back to another episode of mad scientist party hour my name is kevin Kraft, joined once again by a man who just found out he's highly allergic to pants and underwear and now he's jacking his boner off in order to itch it that's dookie boy the cocksucker himself jeff clark hey boominati and Transmitting to us from Optimus Prime's robot anus, the bearded digital dingleberry known as Shuddy Boy. It's pronounced anus. Anus, yes. Forgive me. There we go. Now we're in. We're officially in. (laughs) You did it. Everybody who is OCD out there listening to the intro, you you scratch that itch for them, Shuddy. (laughs) <laughs> so i'm glad shuddy. i could i'm glad i could you're looking pretty sh- svelte there shuddy did your haircut make your face lose weight or something i mean there's less so i mean yeah you look you look shuddy you look skinnier and younger than just when we did queef or no queef last week i mean that's just because my beard has been trimmed and all the fucking huge fro of hair that had been building up uh is gone and it was a significant amount uh because probably against better judgment i did go snowboarding again oh yeah how are your titties feeling my helmet was too big and i couldn't figure out why and then i realized it was because i had gotten a haircut so i had to use a little knobby to tighten it uh, so yes, my head is smaller because of how much hair was removed when I got it cut. Man, that's like really where I was going with that. But those thick Italian locks are really uh, weighing you down. To answer your question, I feel better. I still have a little bit of soreness, but nothing like last week. And I was able to touch my toes with only slightly more discomfort than normal. So that's how I determined I was okay to go back on the mountain. Bam. Well, I had a pretty successful trip to the mountain myself. Went up for with, a few went hours. With, with, uh, went with butt package. And uh, Have you been twice since? Or no, have just, we just talked a lot in between podcasts? Yeah, we've just talked a lot between podcasts. All right, fair enough. Continue. But yeah, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't push my luck too much. Uh, I didn't get too crazy with the jumps, and you know, it's still there hasn't been much snow, so they're relying heavily on the fake manufactured shit. And then by eleven o'clock, the sun was so warm that the snow was melting and it got sticky as fuck. It was like snowboarding on Elmer's glue. If you weren't on a decline and on our very last run of the day, fucking butt package, just, you know how like at the, every mountain pretty much has like a, a nice big steep slope before it gets to the flat part where all the, the ski lifts are. And on our last run, right when the, at the bottom of the very last hill where it starts to smooth out, butt package just fucking ate shit and snapped his board. Oh, Which no. I've never seen I, happen. I saw that on Instagram. I was wondering what kind of nonsense he had gotten into. To yeah, he wasn't he wasn't fucking off or you know doing a crazy jump or anything. It's just he wasn't showboating. No, it just the 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 snow was so sticky that right when it evened out, it just fucked him up. And I he, I mean he was like tumbling and shit. So when I he was ahead of me, and when I caught up to him, I was like, shit, are you okay? As I, like, went by him, he's like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And he got up, and he was, you know, fine, wasn't, like, limping or anything, nothing was fucked up. But, you know, I stopped almost immediately because of how sticky the snow was, and he's like, dude, I think my board is broken. And when he got his feet out of the binding, just, pew, 
Boop. Board just fucking limped over like Jeff's weenus. <laughs> yeah, I felt like it was going there. Oh, you want to fool? It's like, oh, here we go. Here's a <laughs> shot of my cock. Well, I mean, we... The old old Kevin Kraft playbook. Here it comes. <laughs> we We touched on it in the Easter egg, but... Jeff, you learned a little something about your ancestry Her- recently. Yeah, your heritage. My, my genealogy, I think, is the term. Uh, yeah. Uh, my uncle has been into that shit, and he told my genealogy? mom that, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Because Does that mean you're becoming a genie? In, <laughs> in his defense, I've never really had a full explanation about you know, my nationalities and stuff like that. I just tell people I'm American. Like everyone says like, Oh, I'm part Irish or I'm part of Italian. I'm just like, I'm just, a, I'm just a white mutt. I'm an American. I know my grandmother's a hundred percent Italian, but from there, it's just kind of a mix. Like, I'm not sure what my father's family is for the most part. I think part English or Scottish, like, you know, the UK, I think. And then yeah, cause you always had a thing where you were part Irish and you are a, self-loathing yeah. Irishman. I, I think I still am because on my father's side, but on my, on my mother's side, it's full Italian. And then I think it's mostly Swedish. According to my uncle, got a lot of Swedish in us. So wait, where the fuck did the Swedish come from? If everybody's like a hundred percent Italian, my grandmother is a hundred percent Italian. My grandfather is not, he's Swedish apparently. So what do you so what do you my, consider my worse? A half Italian, and I think that would make me a quarter Italian. Do you hate your Irish heritage or your Swedish heritage more? Truth be told, I mean, I'm, well, it's a little you know. I've uh, had a combative couple months with the Swedes, but I, I think I hate the Irish side mostly. They just man, it, they there's took the L's for like that hundreds of years. There's no side of you that is Irish. I don't believe that to be. I think there is. I, I think I am part Irish. I think you need to do a 23 side. in me. I yeah, know. You I gotta, might have to. It's, I think it's time for you to giz in a cup and put it out in the mail. Is that how it works? <laughs> you yeah, that's exactly mail? how it works. Yeah. You have to... You, you, <laughs> You you giz into I'm a not... Ziploc bag and you drop it in the mail and just write twenty three <laughs> and make on the envelope and ship it off. Uh, yeah, I you thought that I feel... needs to go. <laughs> I thought I fill something out online and they send me like a kit and I wasn't going to read the directions anymore since you guys helped me out. I was yeah. just going to jerk well, off in whatever vial they send me. Actually, they've gotten they've figured out how to get like like extremely pinpoint accurate. So you have to like take a dump in a Tupperware. And then bust a nut on it, and then seal it real quick, and send it off to them. Did uh, I do it? Did I do it right? I, I mean, I've been known to jerk off in my poop quite often, actually. <laughs> I think we uh, talked about that. Oh, we did. We did. Shady All right. Just... So this isn't news to the Puminati. <laughs> One of the things I'm known for is uh, nutting on my turds. <laughs> yeah. Part of my brand is that I jerk off my shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that kind of makes sense. You know, the just, you know, months after trying sewer stroming, you now find out you're part Swedish. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Kind, kind of metal of you. Right. It's uh, interesting. It's funny how life works, I guess. Carl's going to be Small pumped. Small world. Carl's going to plus. Carl's going to like you even more now, now that she knows you've got some some Swedish in your genes. Yeah. How long did Carl spend time in Sweden, right? Yeah. She did she did a, a year of school abroad. And she I know she, we talked about this. Can she speak any Swedish? No, it's, not really. She Swedish, she tried. Swedish is its own language, right? They sure they do. Yeah, language. yeah. They have Swedish. Oh, well, I would have guessed that. Okay. She she tried. You know what? I she, think she in, was like she was honor... saying. Go, Go ahead, Shadi. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, in honor of that question of Jeff's, I'll pull up some Swedish words and text them to both of you, and he can try to pronounce them. 
while you tell your Carl story. Oh, that's a good idea, Shuddy. Thank I you. thought we could um, do Swedish or gibberish, and I would try to come up with or decide which is which. But fair enough, we can do it your way. Swedish is tough, man. She she gave it a shot, and you know she can speak English and Taiwanese, which are. I mean, English is tough if it's not your first language, but I, I always forget if it's like Mandarin or Cantonese she can speak, but like Asian languages so are saying fucking difficult. No, I don't think so. Like like when she was, when we watched Everything Everywhere All at Once, I guess Ki Hui Kwan's character would jump back and forth, I think, between Mandarin and Cantonese. And she could like identify it when she hears it, but she can't speak both of them. She just knows the difference. I think, I think either in Japanese or Chinese, or maybe both, you have to know a thousand characters to be fluent. It's it's nuts. Like it's one thing to speak it, but then they have they also have like two or three different ways of writing it in Japanese. And I saw some some reel where this like white chick who's fluent in Japanese was like, Okay, I'm gonna break it down to you. If you were to literally translate Japanese sentences you would basically be talking like Yoda so she took like a Japanese sentence of like just like an inter a simple interaction two people would have and it's like two Yodas talking to each other it, most people their syntax or most most languages their syntax is backwards from American so that's why it's hard for us to learn their shit and vice versa so I just I had to do a screen grab because I don't know how to do all the appropriate over vowel punctuation in iMessage. So it's gonna be tough. I just sent it to you guys in the <laughs> the group chat. All right, you go first, Jeff. It's fun writing like these. Uh, I'm betting this Danish golfer, and he has like a. Um, like a, a dash or a line through his O. His name's Hoygard. I like I, it's fun, like typing in those names. So, like for the A, you got to like hold down the A a little longer, and then there's like eight different options. And I think for this circle over, yeah, it's the circle over. It's number seven. Oh yeah. shit! Mm -hmm. On the the MacBook, it's eight. But thanks, Jeff. Is it eight? Okay. But look at Jeff teaching us things. Yeah, I'm, I, I learned this from golf, He's, having to type out o Oberg. Yeah, who says this is isn't an educational podcast? Yeah, Jeff does bring something to the table every now and then. So, I remember actually, very, yeah. very early on, it's like when the podcast first launched, someone checked it out and wrote a, like a one-star review and was like, I thought this was going to be like an educational podcast about science, and it's just some guys talking about farting. <laughs> one star <laughs> um, which might as well I mean based on that that's counterintuitive that's like when Kevin really shits on a movie and then gives it four stars that's sounds like the opposite rating I'm nope I'm not going to land that plane very well Never stone, you stone shutty boy I'm not so, I think that's the problem I'm just hyped up on caffeine and some PEDs so oh, yeah. knowing that you pronounce that A as an O, I don't know what to do with the first O. I'll guess four Oh yeah, I think Jeff's close. Like maybe fior fjorlote. And which means mm -hmm. fart. Uh according to the pronunciation on this website, it's Falort. Falort? The oh. fucking R's in the but, wrong place. It's F O R L A T, and both the vowels the have like silly it, shit over them. I'm hearing it as falort, but hmm. Jeff is close enough. It means I'm sorry. Hmm. Hello. Well, that's that's something we'll never need to learn in our put in our lexicon. I just sent one, another one. H E J. I'm familiar with this one from Ikea. It means... Oh, my God. Hey! <laughs> I, would just, I would say Hej. 
Yeah, I feel like Shuddy's not going to make one that easy. I know, but I don't know what to say. I can't come up with another way. Of, it's a three-letter word, H-E-J. I don't know. Yeah, being that the last one was spelled F-O-R-L-A-T, and it was Falort, I'll say H-E-J means J. These backwards bastards. Nice. Hey. That's actually a good guess. Hey. Wait, I was right uh, the first time? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> I was... Oh no, Kevin's got it. Maybe I'm Swedish too. It's time what for me to giz, giz on in, one of my poops. You said you see that in IKEA. What does it mean? Hello. It means that's, exactly what "hey" means. That's like, embarrassing. When you see somebody, you're like, "Hey, what's up?" Hello. That, that whole little word was embarrassing <laughs> for me personally. All right, do you have another one? Yeah, let's uh, do. Let's do one more. I'm finding one that. Oh, here we go. I'm going to make a section with like titties or something. I want to see what Swedish titties look like. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the it's like you know an A with two little circles over it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, oh my baby. God! Shuddy's now getting a sentence now. <laughs> uh. It's so it's T R so it, it's three words T R V L I G T second word is A T T third word is T R A with a hat F F A S A with oh. umlauts Trevlet at uh, Treveas <laughs> I'll say it's Trevgill at Trophus. All right, Kevin, what's your guess? Jeff, you can't guess twice. Trevgilt at Trifus. Trifos. It's Trevlicht at Trifos. Which I means think I got that one. Which means were, suck my were dick. Pretty goddamn close, Jeff. Oh. Well, you're cheating because you're Swedish. What is uh what, <laughs> yeah. what's that what's that mean, Shuddy? Nice to meet you. Oh, man, I really thought it was going to be nice tits. No, I'm on a regular, <laughs> like, every day, teach anybody Swedish phrases. Nice tits is not going to be, uh, let's see. I just, uh, imagine just completely lean, like, lean into the Swedish thing, and I just fucking, like, I start studying Swedish on Duolingo. And it all just clicks. Oh, I'm learning this quick. <laughs> yeah. Forken, pilgen, schlagen, flupen. Here. This you is. You know what? Swedish meatballs. They were they are the, the better internet, <laughs> This is a way to say big tits in Swedish. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. You've been meatballed. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's, Jeff's genealogy has been meatballed. This is excellent. Oh, man. Whoa. Yeah, I got... Wait, what's that? Uh, I, I put in big tits, and Google Translate gave me a different first word, but the same second word. Oh, so... Brost. Which, Brost. Did it give you store, crafted, stores in, or grove? Stora. Stora Brost. I mean, so this, this one would be generous Brost. That, that looks generous like, Brost. It, it makes sense. It, huh. Like it, uh, it looks like it just says for, generous breasts. Uh, uh, tutter t u t t a r is also a word for tits. It sounds Gross real slangy. Is, is obviously breasts, uh, and p a t t a r also works for tit apparently in Swedish. All right, we're ready. Let's book a trip to Sweden. We know so everything we need to know. Apparently, vagina. Is vagina pretty easy? Are you looking at the the right column when you Google translated? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward here. He's the English two arrows and then Swedish. I could flip it back and forth, but I don't know the Swedish word, so I got to put it in English first. Wait a second, guys! Everything I'm typing in is the same in English and Swedish. <laughs> this is easy. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, that's very exciting for you, Jeff. Always, always yeah. finding new wrinkles, even this late into life. What a joyous yeah, journey. Something, learn something new about myself. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, so a couple quick little housekeeping things. I figure, Uh-oh. well, you guys already know this, but I figure I would give the uh, the Puminati the, the full scoop first. We shot the very last thing we, we we're going to need to shoot for the John Cooper movie last week. And I teased that it was a comedian. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's just let everybody know who it is. Um, the scenes have been shot, but I don't think the ink is dry on all the paperwork yet. So I could be shooting myself in the foot here, but that's always fun too, right? Um, joining the ranks. Do you want to, what? I was going to say, do you want to tempt fate if not everything is finalized? Like... Yeah. We should build this up even more than we already have. Let's tease the, until next week. We'll tell everyone we'll tell them next week. I mean, the scenes are shot. Stay tuned. Um I've I have <laughs> come to crossroads on like a like a like a a you know, fork in the road where I'm like, mm. Mm. All right, this seems pretty locked in. Do I announce it or and shoot myself in the foot or hold on to it? And I held on to it and it still fell through. So I have a feeling that Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I, I do not have bad luck. I'm done with that chapter of my life. I'm a good luck man now. So. Love that. Joining the ranks of the talking heads, being that the second coming of John Co- Cooper is a mockumentary. So there's people playing themselves, talking to the camera that are cut in and out of the movie throughout it. And uh, everybody knows, I believe, that Rob Corddry is in it. Doug Benson is in it. We have an actor who plays John Cooper's fictional manager who chimes in from time to time. We also got a... uh, The casting director pitched an idea of, um, you know, covering our younger demographics and getting an influencer. So we got this young gal... Mads Lewis, who has a massive online following um, as a talking head, which I was a little iffy on at first, but I was like, all right, let's give it a shot. And she turned out that was another pickup day we did. So the one we just shot last week and, and Mads Lewis were outside of the production schedule. And she was fucking awesome. Like she was really really cool really down to earth very fun and easy to work with um she delivered her lines great she was a blast to work with and her scenes turned out great so i'm pumped to have her on board and then we just shot scenes with brian Posehn. Have... uh brian Posehn. <laughs> awesome congrats man i'm happy for you yeah and he he also killed it Fucking really easy guy he to work is, with. Really fun. He seems like such a fun human. Yeah, he's he's cool as fuck, and it's it's awesome because he's you know not Jeff, but I mean me and Shuddy, he's right in our wheelhouse. Like uh, he's a he's a nerd. He loves comics and nerdy shit. He he, he wrote he, Deadpool for a while. Yeah, for a few years he wrote the Deadpool comic. He's a, a metal guy. He loves heavy metal and death metal and stuff. And, um, you know, he's been in Star Wars properties. He was in Mandalorian. And, you know, when he we, we had to shoot the scenes here because we're um, out, of, out of money in the budget to pay for new locations. <laughs> and I was just like, hey, I know a place where we could shoot those scenes for free. Right here. So he came in and saw all, like, this nerdy shit on the wall. And, like, you know, he spent... A, a good few minutes just staring at the the wall over there with the original comic book pages and saw the Hellboy stuff and he was like, oh man, look at that, look at that, oh cool. You got, you got like a nerd museum. Yeah. So it was it 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 turned out great. I went in with the editor and sort of um, you know went over where to put the scenes we sh- his his lines that we shot, which takes to use. And I think I just had a call with the executive producer before we started doing the show. 
and um, we both feel like the movie's in a really, really good place. He had one suggestion for a scene to cut because I do really want to have a nice, tight, brisk runtime. I don't want people to get bored. I don't want people to look at their phone. I don't want stuff that's not really firing on all cylinders to sort of bring things down when you're in the middle of watching it. So I think I do agree with this one scene we might cut. But I think by the end of the week, we should be locked in on the editing process. Then it goes off to simultaneously get sound mixed and color corrected. And then we're going to cut a trailer. And I know people are hitting me up and anxious for hard updates and time frames. And it's kind of, we're just kind of at the mercy of the market. So when, when the film is a hundred percent finished, you know, we're going to exhaust everybody's contacts at different streamers and production companies and stuff and see if we can find a buyer. And depending on how that goes, it could be a very quick process. It could be kind of a long or tricky process. And then also like, Let's say, I don't know, shooting for the stars. Netflix buys it. Then it, the ball is kind of in Netflix's court on when they want to release it. So that's, I'm, I'm in, in as much of the dark as everybody else is. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that the, these next steps go quickly. Whoever, whatever home we find for it puts it up quick and everybody can see it ASAP because I think it turned out pretty goddamn funny. I got some really strong laughs out of Carl, and she does not like my infantile poo-poo weenus humor. She doesn't think you're funny. Yeah, not not in the slightest. Is this Mads Lewis chick? Is she has six point two million million followers on Instagram. Is that the same Mads Lewis? Yeah. Whoa! And I think she has even First. more because she got big through TikTok. So she's got. Oh, like so it's like your TikTok runoff is over here. Yeah. Nice. First things first. Her boyfriend's probably cheating on her, and I would love to talk to her about Jesus that. Jesus fucking Christ, Jeff. <laughs> Second of all, she looks part Swedish, and I'm part Swedish. That's something that me and her can connect on. There you go. I don't know. Shoot for I'm the just stars, about Jeff. The boyfriend. I'm sure. I'm sure they have a wonderful relationship and he's very supportive loyal definitely doesn't hook up with chicks on the side anyways congrats on the well, brian posein land. I, I would like to and, say that if my career ever gets torpedoed in the future it's great that jeff was the one that pushed the button i just want you to know that i just want you to remind you you're now a good luck guy you're not bad luck so your career is going straight up baby not even my dumb ass can torpedo it, even though I'm trying like hell. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for it. I'm, tr I'm trying to bring you down in the gulags with me. <laughs> you will never find success. I will fucking see to it. <laughs> Jeff wants to make sure that the only place that'll pick up John Cooper is Fox Nation. Oh, Fox Nation. We'll promote the fuck out of John Cooper. <laughs> yeah, it was... Um... It was, I mean, this is like the t getting close to the tail end of post-production. So I was really lucky that the planets aligned to get Posehn in. Because it did really feel like there was one element missing. Like we needed one more person chiming in for that really to feel like a, a well-rounded element of the film. And it was tough, man. Even during the strike, I thought people might be like, oh, you guys are approved to shoot during the strike i won't get in trouble with sag yeah i'm looking to work let's do this and some people were like uh yeah for four lines in the film and like a two-hour day of shooting my client would need a hundred thousand dollars and i was like oh okay there's some wiggle room we can get it down to 95 <laughs> yeah 95 dollars <laughs> there were there were like people i was you know sometimes i was like this person seems like in their wheelhouse. And then there were some people I reached out to and I was like, all right, this is a clear long shot. And I feel like there was one person, I wasn't even finished typing the email and the rep responded, don't even fucking think about hitting send on that. No, the answer is no. <laughs> Fuck yourself. 
<laughs> the, it, like the shoot down came that quick. I was like, wow. Wow. No thought so, went into that. Do you that. think then no. that maybe it's just a automatic email that goes out whenever they get an email? That just replies with then, no THX, period? Yeah, and then uh, then they go through their email and be like, oh, let me – I didn't mean to send that to you. I meant to say he's very interested. Yeah, do you have any, like, keywords that they could maybe, like, peg and have, like, an auto reply for? Where it's just, like, independent film and yeah. just they set up on their email, like, anytime – you can e- we get an email from independent film. We just send the yeah. automatic decline email. Any, anything, anything that says low budget, the 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 response <laughs> comes back like, "You have reached mailer <laughs> demon." <of> office. <laughs> yeah, mailer <laughs> demon. <laughs> Man, mailer out demon. That's office. a cool name for a death metal band. Mailer demon. Out of office until twenty twenty eight. Another bit of MSPH housekeeping slash news slash announcements the great dustin ibarra is going to be on the tonight show this week on wednesday wednesday night with jimmy fallon yes yep yeah it's so he's out in new york right now yeah going tomorrow maybe no he's there now that's awesome is he doing is he is he uh is he performing in New York City clubs too? I would imagine. I would assume, so. right? Yeah, yeah, probably. But yeah, he's. He, Has the, he ever done the cellar? I I don't know. I would I guess know he's he on in Vegas. Yeah he he's on the show Wednesday with Naomi Watts, Michelle Yeoh, and Dustin doing stand up. So, if you still have cable, set your DVRs. Because I mean that's. I'm so fucking happy for the guy. It's just so cool. Like he's just been crushing it nonstop for years and years and years. And he's got his special recorded. That's almost finished. Finally getting on some late night doing the tonight show. It's just man. And and then, you know, of course, at some point this year, the second coming of John Cooper. Really fucking pumped for him. So he has no dates in New York, according to his website. Hmm. But isn't that like, I don't know. Isn't that like for gigs that like he headlines that stuff? And like, where is what, he listed on his website? Probably, yeah. Whereas he could probably just drop in and out of like um, comedy clubs and like, I don't know, pick that up 15, be. 20 minutes here or there, you know? Like, you know, like Bill Burr, obviously, you know, Dustin's not on that level, but Bill Burr, David Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, they, they'll do, like, random spots in clubs, you know what I mean? They'll just go yeah. and hang out and get in there, and it's like you can't buy a ticket on their website. It's not how it works. I mean, I saw today that the the comedy store in Hollywood was like, hey, we have a, a secret show tonight. Guess who our top secret super famous headliner is and i was like mm, man it's usually Chapp- like era it's it's usually Chappelle. a lot of times when they do that mm-hmm. it's Chappelle. but mondays mondays they can't do it otherwise tickets were like 20 bucks i probably would have gone this is what did you say this the store or the improv the store gotcha yeah so don't forget dustin ibarra on the tonight show wednesday I don't have cable. Carl gets it through her condo. It's like included with the HOA, but she doesn't know if she has DVR or not. So we might both just be looking on the Tonight Show's YouTube to sort of... It should be on the I'm cock, on. no? Is it on the cock? The Tonight Show should uh, be on the cock. Uh, yeah, I'd assume so. Yeah, for sure. It might be the next day, but it should absolutely be on the cock. And this is fucking cool. So I'm on the uh, Tonight Show YouTube TV like page, and I just I just uh, added it to my DVR. YouTube TV is got like unlimited DVR, but they got the January 24th show. Na- Na- uh, Naomi Watts, Michelle Yeoh, and Dustin Ibarra. Like his name is on there. It's, it's fucking, fucking cool, sick. right? Yeah, yeah. So I just Googled it. It looks like it is on the cock. Again, we we don't know what the delay is, if it's on that night or 
they delay it to the next day. If you got a premium subscription to Hulu or YouTube TV, it looks like you can get it there too. So yeah, support the homie. thirty-four. I'll be watching this after basketball. Oh yeah. The next day is Justin Timberlake and Molly Ringwald. I think good for Dustin. That's fucking sick. Yeah. Finally, finally. Dude's Hopefully funny. He then. mentions both us and John Cooper while he's on the Tonight Show on Wednesday. <laughs> Make sure to text him to remind him. It's, it's like his, his hour stand up show where he randomly <laughs> shouts out the MSPH podcast. Yeah. And I don't know what to do with my hand, so I just wave. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the cameras were filming when he did that at his special either. No, but like the whole crowd, like you know, I mean the whole crowd was there and they yeah. all like looked in our direction. <laughs> we got I looked at I looked at the numbers. We got a bump of like two new listeners from that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Everyone counts, Welcome, buddy. Friends. Everyone counts. And those two people hopefully told a friend who also told friends. Yeah. But um yeah, it is it is just really sick that Dustin's on this hot hot streak. Fucking pumped for the guy. Um, let's see what else is going on here. Oh shit, Jeff. I went and mm-hmm. I saw ISS. Oh, I think I'm going to that tomorrow. Okay, should should I should I not go to that? No, I think I think you should still go. It's just. I was thinking about it after watching the trailer because, like, I had a really strong reaction to it. I was like, whoa. Because, like, you know, it just shows people in outer space in the space station in the trailer. They look out the window and they just see nukes exploding all over the Earth. And they're just like, oh, uh, guys, trailer. what the fuck is going on here? And I'm like, oh, man, what a cool setup for a movie. What a cool premise. And it doesn't pay off as well as you would like it to. Because I think my initial reaction was just that shock of not knowing this movie and then being like, whoa, astronauts like looking down at Earth and just seeing all out nuclear war. What a, that's so fucking cool. But then it's like, all right, how do you ex- take something that cool and extend it for the length of a feature? And it's kind of tough. I feel like there's a couple different ways you could go about it. Like, because they also show in the trailer that there's, Russians on board and Americans on board, they both get a note in their little station like, hey, by any means necessary, take control of the space station. So it could have been like an all-out fucking brawl where they're like stabbing each other's eyes out with fucking NASA forks. It could be John Wick in space where it's just gruesome as all hell. Or it could be a more grounded approach and take a psychological thing. And they kind of, they tried to meet in the middle a little bit with that. And I was like, I feel like it would have worked better if they committed one way or the other. And it's I also, a bloodbath or if it's more cerebral. Yeah. And, and Carl and I both were like, well, we're not astronaut scientists, so don't really know a ton about the ISS. So we Googled some shit because she was like, I think that this whole plot is bullshit. Why were there only six people on the station the thing is gigantic. Where are all the other people? What's go- Why did they only show like a few rooms? Earth. Earth, Earth Carl. Yeah. That's, that's where everyone was. Well, she, we both were kind of under the assumption that the ISS is massive and there's like a ton of people on it at all times, but that's not true. There's no. uh, six to you seven. Know, I mean, no, I like four people. I, I guess I missed Kevin's that day in school. They like... Kevin's like expecting like the the crew of the Enterprise all on the space station. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you never yeah. saw like when they, like they every now people. and then they would like interview these guys via satellite, obviously, and there'd be like four of them. Let me stop you there. I've I've never watched a single astronaut interview. I will admit that. So I didn't know anything about. It. I didn't know anything about the ISS. The amount of people Where that are on everybody there. Everybody else. <laughs> How the fuck are they operating this thing on a skeleton crew? <laughs> yeah, and, and it was just like, they're on, oh they're shit, on the ground. <laughs> like on the drive home, Carl was driving, and I'm I'm on Wikipedia, and I'm like, oh fuck, the movie was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought it was factually inaccurate? <laughs> oh man, we don't want to have that many characters, so we're just gonna dumb down the, we're just gonna fucking slim the crew. 
So yeah, it, it couldn't be a John Wick thing where there's just like two dozen <laughs> slaughters that <No>. happen. <laughs> Those are 50 bad guys on the ISS. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it, it was it was still kind of cool. I did feel the tension, but there was some stuff where the ideas they presented weren't fully flushed out. So as an audience member, you're like, wait, where did that come from? That's That's in play in this plot? I did not realize that. At, but with trying to be as as least spoilery as possible, it it kind of confused me a little bit, and I feel like it kind of hurt the movie a little bit. But it, and and also going into it, I you know Jeff and I were both like, "Holy shit!" I, that, I'm fucking pumped for this movie. And then I saw the reviews, and I was like, "Ah, shit!" They were bad. But they're I don't do that. I don't think this movie was as bad as the reviews are making it out. It still had a lot of tense moments. There was a lot of back and forth, double cross, what have you. So I was I was into it. It wasn't as good as the premise could have been. I don't think it lived up to its full potential, but I'll suck I'll suck three astronaut dicks. It wasn't bad. Alright. And I still think you should go see it, Jeff. I don't think Maybe that'll even help going in knowing that it's not John Wick in space. And now you guys know that there's not 100 people at all times on the ISS. So you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for helping me with that. <laughs> How many people do you think go up in the space shuttle? <laughs> well, they're building a fucking community up there. Now that I've seen. They got schools and teachers and shit. Well, because we were both like, all right, well, where's the fucking med bay? Where's the, where are the doctors? Like, where's, where's, the, where's the space dentist? And since it's well, in so janitor, they don't have any like custodians or like cleaning ladies. <laughs> yeah, it's in space. Is it universal healthcare? It's in the universe. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Hey, I need just for one thing for me. Jeff C tit or Jeff C no tit? Jeff C no tit. Jeez. I feel like that could have been that could have been easily surmised yeah what did you think was yeah. happened some some russian lady was about to get killed by an american she's like no no here look at my new gatos yeah <laughs> i don't know i thought maybe one of the 200 people in the international space station would show their titties <laughs> it's not a nudist colony jeff they're fucking scientists <laughs> god damn it oh yeah apparently you did read the wikipedia on this didn't you? <laughs> I honestly thought it was PG-13 at first, and then someone dropped an F-bomb, and I was like, ooh, cool, they got their one F-bomb in. And then someone else dropped an F-bomb, and I was like, nice. I got a letterbox D-list going of movie PG-13 movies where they say fuck more than once. And um, and then I heard it a third time, and I was like, ooh, you guys are pushing the limits there. And then there was like a, a three more fucks, and I was like, okay, this movie's clearly rated R. <laughs> but it, no it didn't need to be. It wasn't all that violent. I feel like the violence in it never pushed it past PG-13. So they just threw in a bunch of fucks to make it an R-rated movie, which makes it tougher to make your money back. And I don't think ISS did very well either. I think opening weekend, it only made like $3 million. Yeah, so, there's a dead spot in the movie calendar too. Yeah. Anytime you know movies come out around now, it's, it is not a good sign. No. January and February are usually studio graveyards. Yeah. They, th- this is when they, like, they, they hit the, the release button on their um, <laughs> their space toilets. What's the movie that they sank like $300 million into and they, they put it out like in the last week of January? Was it Jupiter Rising? Was that the name of that movie? Jupiter oh. Ascending. Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> I will <laughs> say... They, they put the money in that like like it was going to be a fucking Marvel movie, and it's just dead. Just like cost, it cost them a good two hundred million. I saw that movie opening night at the ArcLight, and it was a sold out theater, and it was like going to Rocky Horror. Like people were laughing their asses off through that whole movie. Not a comedy. They were <laughs> they were laughing at stuff that was not supposed to be funny. Jupiter ascending. I feel like Mila Kunis. She was in it. Mila Kunis. So uh, yeah, yeah, and Channing Tatum Channing played Tatum. a. Um, Sean Bean made it. Did he, did he die? Spoiler alert! Probably he died, right. I don't even remember, but probably. <laughs> Dude, Channing Tatum played a 
zero gravity rollerblading space dog. It was fucking nuts. It was just Man. as silly as silly could be. It's if called you, the space opera. You gotta, you gotta have some balls to fucking <laughs> try to make one of those. Yeah, but I guess like it was made by the Wachowskis. So at that time, they were still just living off that matrix. Like, hey, you I mean, see what we do? We, we can do before. Give us one more chance. I will say the one place where people thought the Wachowskis fucked up when they didn't was Speed Racer. I just don't think people were ready for that style of movie yet. But I recommend going back and rewatching Speed Racer and being as high as humanly possible because it is fucking sick. I saw Speed Racer sober and I remember enjoying it. Yeah, it's fucking cool. It's 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 very similar to Scott Pilgrim. It's like a movie with ADD. I just don't think people are ready for that style yet. I'm on the Jupiter Ascending Wikipedia page, and I do not remember this, but apparently it made 184 million. Yeah, but how much? On did it like cost? a 210 million budget. Yeah, that doesn't. I mean, it not sting as bad as it could have. Right? Then you probably double it for marketing or something like that. Yeah, they do put. Yeah. Marketing budget is usually pretty steep for blockbusters like that. If you were to ask me ahead of time before looking at this, but the over under on box office gross, I would I would have put it at like forty five million. Yeah, I, 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 my impression was it just completely shit the bed. But I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, I it. think John Carter is still the biggest, one of the biggest is was a bigger flop than Jupiter Ascending. I think yeah. it did. Maybe it did well in Australia and New Zealand. That's like also where the movie was distributed as well. Uh, Jupiter Ascending. I mean, I don't even remember John Carter. What is that? Yeah, with Taylor Lautner. Kitch. Oh, Kitch. Yeah, Lautner. I think is the is the Twilight guy. Yes. That guy fell off the face of the earth. At Taylor Kitch, like I was in True Detective season. Two, I think, right? The lost season, the shitty one. Have you guys watched the new one so far? No. I haven't watched any true detective past season one. I haven't watched any true detective past any trailer that's shown for it on whatever else I'm watching on HBO. Right. Man. We talked about this last week, my bad. All right, friend. <clears throat> well. I watched this uh, Netflix documentary called American Nightmare. Did Carl check that out yet? Actually, I'll text her. Probably. <sighs> Fucking banger. Netflix is back. It's been a while since I got a good Netflix documentary, but it's a nice little, it's pretty short. Three episodes, like 45 to 50 minutes per episode. Uh, What's the premise about, of this one? Um, a home invasion that leads to a kidnapping, that leads to a rape. And the investigation around it and, and all that stuff. So some guy uh, invades a home of a couple, sedates the couple, like gives them like, you know, drugs or whatever. Um, and has like a weapon on him. And so he's like flashing the weapon in their in their face and like forcing them to take drugs at gunpoint and then ends, ends up abducting the lady. That's like how it starts. And then the uh and they have like they have like footage from the um the the police office, um the police headquarters of them interrogating him and then the cops just straight up like not believing him. And then the girl comes back, like the kidnapper drops her back off at her parents' house, and then she just like tries to tell her story, and like the cops are like no, this is the gone girl thing all over again. You you guys are both lying. They thought like the couple were lying. It's just like the maybe I say this a lot, so I guess I don't wanna I don't wanna um exaggerate too much, but it, it's pretty epic bad police work. Like pretty epic. I feel like that's bad. a common because like Carl gives me updates on all the ones that she watches, and that seems to be a very common thread amongst all of these true crime stories is just police incompetence. Well, yeah. it's not interesting if the cops did everything right and 
buttoned up yeah. the case quickly and efficiently. Well, I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's, it's, they're good. Like the Richard Ramirez, those cops were like fucking. Oh yeah, like, but it's also like impressive. when they were trying to find um, the Zodiac killer. Like it was just, it was like they were trying really hard, but it's like, man, this guy's such a fucking super genius. He's really got us on our toes, which is interesting. But like straight up, like a crime happens, and the police are just like. Eh, no crime happened. You're fucking lying. That's like, wow. A little bit of a difference yeah. between the people trying to catch the Zodiac killer and, and these guys. And like, one of, shitty thing to laugh about, like one of the Jeffrey Dahmer victims, like, like ran to the cops, the knife sticking at him. Like, I need help. Someone tried to kill me. Yeah, and they and delivered like, him right back oh, to him. Oh, you're a gay guy. You guys are just doing gay things. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it, oh, this terrible. is the guy who is um, trying to rape, murder, and eat you? All right, we're going to just release you back into his custody. Yeah. You seem you a little you hysterical. You guys get down. <laughs> yeah. But this one this one was a banger? I thought, it was, yeah, it was one of the better Netflix documentaries I've seen in a while. I'll give it... I actually... I put it on Friday night, and... There's a very low chance of me completing an episode in that, in that situation because I've usually been working since like 6 a.m. And I'll start drinking at like 5.30, smoking pot at 5.30. So about like 8, 8.30, like I'm pretty much done for. So I turned this on at like 8, 8.30, watched the first episode. I was like, I, I have to watch this whole fucking thing. I got I got to see it. I got to see it. I'm not going to wait another day, oh, especially shit. there's football on the next day. So I was like, fuck it. Let's go, baby. It was sick. I liked it a lot. I I'll definitely hit up Carl about it, put it on her radar. Even maybe she's seen it already, and then get a review. But yeah, do it I today. It was awesome. So I'll... do it. To text text Carl today, so she'll watch it during the week and finish it by the weekend. Yeah. All right. I'll Wait till right after now. you record Dragon Ball Queef with Kevin on Friday. Nope, don't to do text that. Text her about it, so Kevin can watch it and report back next Monday. Nope. How many dicks are you sucking? I'll go four. Four American Nightmare Dicks. <laughs> well, I uh, I know... Shuddy, you didn't watch anything, did you? Uh, Shin Godzilla. I remember that being good. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. Doesn't that start with him as like a Godzilla sperm, just like wiggling through the city? I mean, I wouldn't, he didn't re- resemble a sperm at all, but he did wriggle <laughs> through the city. Uh, yeah, the mutation was a weird storyline compared to the traditional Godzilla lore yeah. that I'm familiar with. Uh, but it was good. It was very enjoyable. Uh, I, I liked it a lot. I really want to see minus one now. Uh Minus one's better than Shin Godzilla, for sure. That's what Mark Rooster said. So how many Shin and, Godzilla dicks would you suck? Uh, They're probably three, big. 375. 375 giant Shin Godzilla mutating. My one, my one real problem with Shin Godzilla was how fucking long his tail was. It was comically long for the proportions of his body, in my opinion. Mm. I don't even remember that. Every time they showed a full side view with his tail involved, I just kept yelling, look at how long his fucking tail is uh, in my stone stupor. <laughs> well, I, I I got hit up recently by a, a recent guest of the show who usually doesn't come on this often, but he has a special news brief a, a, a very special, important news bulletin to deliver to everybody. So I told him he and, could come back. And I, I do have to say that it was really, really great of him to reach out to me to make sure that he wasn't stepping on the re- real newsman of the show's toes uh, when he delivers this. That's so funny because he called me that. He called me and told me that you're a pussy and a fake newsman, but whatever. Um, without Without further ado, here's a special... News Bulletin. Are you having a good day? Well, I'm about to ruin it. This is Groupie's Bad News. 
Uh, hello, there, gentlemen. Hey, Droopy. Top chirps. Um, I don't like to make back-to-back appearances like this. You know, I don't want to wear out my welcome, and I, honestly, I have better things to do. If we're being honest, but uh, <laughs> are you guys familiar with Ozempic? No. Uh, yeah. So weight loss or like dietary drug. Uh, yeah, it was uh, initially people with diabetes were taking it, but then um, they discovered that it's a weight loss appetite suppressant as well. So now they just hand it out like candy and uh, people take it and lose tons and tons of weight without putting in any effort. So it's become quite popular mm-hmm. these days. And, uh, well, one woman was taking it and experienced one of the rare side effects of the drug gastro uh, gastro uh, one more try gastroparesis which affects stomach muscles so this one woman in particular who has uh, remained anonymous through this whole thing had to gastroparesis un- she had to uh, undergo an 8 hour emergency surgery to attempt to repair her colon and once it finished the doctors told her that she would never have a solid bowel movement again so Man. what is gastroparesis I think it's probably it fucks with from ever being able to form a solid turd again it affects the uh, the stomach muscles <laughs> Shuddy boy, and uh, she's now won a lifetime subscription to diarrhea. I feel like I saw a smile in Jerpy's face. You really like reporting this news story. Well, that's not true. I'm a dog, so sometimes it just looks like I'm smiling when I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I usually can tell when my dog smiles. <laughs> I think the poopy news is right up your alley. Uh, the unnamed woman has joined a dozen other people suing over these rare side effects from taking Ozempic. Uh, but I believe she is the first to uh, be diagnosed with permanent diarrhea. Does it I like I've had say permanent diarrhea since last week. How, yeah, how loose her, poop, her poo is? I don't think the... Like, is it- they're showing any f- photographs of it. Is like, is she going to be like peeing out of her butthole for the rest of her life, or is it just going to be, you know, soft stool? Um, I think there's a a big difference between soft serve and just straight up die a fucking Rhea. And um, I think she's got the latter. I think she's got so a lot it's of. Just gonna be- Liquid bowel movements for the rest of her life. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of wet poo in her a lot future. Of chocolate milk coming out of her butthole. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Jeff, would you take permanent diarrhea to be effortless, effortlessly svelte for the rest of your life? Uh, probably. I, I just have to, like, the diarrhea, I have to get the diarrhea kind of under control. Like, is every time I poop, it's just kind of excruciating and it's I'm pretty much pissing out of my ass? Or do I always feel like I have to shit? I mean, I've pissed out of my ass before where it, it wasn't excruciating. I just pissed out of my ass. Yeah, but, like, the, the, the diarrhea... Like you know, you're, I feel like my stomach always hurts every time I pee out of my butt. <laughs> like it might not I mean, hurt I my think, butt, but it hurts I my, my we, stomach is in pain. Before he answers, we really need to frame this question more appropriately for a show, for the show. And would you suck a dick, Jeff, or would you? Every time you pooped, you had liquid diarrhea. Well, I mean, I would not suck a dick. No. Yeah, so j- I would jokes, just take the liquid jo- diarrhea. Jokes on Jeff. Sucking dick gives him diarrhea. 
Why are you chirpy? <laughs> no, I think he's I He's semen I think intolerant. I, I I would do a life of being slim with only having to take a pill if, if it was just controllable diarrhea. Like I don't want to shit my pants in public. I'm okay yeah, with running to the sprinting to the bathroom. I do wish that there was more information about her diarrhea. Cause I've had How much um, more do you need? Stretches of it. I mean, pretty much the issues that you raised. Um, not all diarrhea is created equal. Sometimes <laughs> you just have uh, your usual scheduled poos, and they're all wet and sloppy. And then sometimes you feel like you have to take a shit, and then 10 seconds later, you're running to the bathroom holding your butt cheeks. So if it's... A perpetual butt cheek holding molten shit. Would you still do it, Jeff? You don't have to exercise anymore. You don't have to eat right. You just have to piss out of your fucking ass. No, I won't. I, I, the, the word perpetual scared me. What Drew a pussy. <laughs> I do want to be slim, but I thought you were a I'm real gonna... man. I don't think I don't know if you need to take any shots well, at my masculinity here. <laughs> if you haven't heard Droopy, Jeff is Swedish, so maybe that has something to do with it. Well, oh, I, I knew there was something about you that I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, you think Swedish meatballs are bullshit too? I hear you. Yeah, you nasty ass. Probably you Sir, Sir Stroman. Dogs would eat anything. Oh yeah. Um, sewer scrumming smells like ass and you know dogs love that it gives me a boner that one time I went to Kevin's house to do the sewer scrumming um, jerby I I usually bring little mom and my dog to uh, to Kevin's house but I didn't want to risk her like licking the can or smelling it or wanting some and me like losing respect for little mama <laughs> Yeah, she probably would have just dove in and, you know, oh, yeah. warfed it all down. <laughs> She's looking at me like, you done with that? Are you done? You want? <laughs> Can I have some of that? You done? Uh, so before I go, a, a word of warning for Shuddy Boy. Oh. A, um, a Pennsylvania man finally <laughs> lost his cool with his next door neighbor and burst in the front door. And stabbed him to death while he was eating dinner. Jesus. And the reason behind the murder, the neighbor constantly snored super loud. I do. I have been sleeping every night with the window open. And I've, Uh, I've heard about your sleep apnea. Yeah, that is concerning. Where did that happen? Uh, I'm going to have to check my, my sources. But um, apparently the the two neighbors had a long-standing feud due to the neighbors' constant loud snoring that could be heard through their shared wall. Uh, so All should, right, so they lived, they the lived in a, or, or a row home. So I'm not really in, that da- in danger of that happening uh, because... There is some distance between mine and my neighbor's house. Yeah, but your snoring is pretty bad. It's not that bad. Draven sleeps in the room next to me and doesn't have any issues that I'm aware of. Do you, uh, it's been a while since we talked about this, do you have a sleep apnea machine? No, because since I lost the weight, it's just gone to regular, kind of to regular snoring. When, I'm, when I uh, I don't think I talked about this, but when I went to Vegas with my my homies and their dad, their dad had a sleep apnea machine, and like you he did was like, say that I did. You okay. did tell us that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shit was a trip. Uh, by the way, shitty boy, this took place in Upper Moreland Township. That's actually, I believe, not that far from me. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, that, that pissed off murderer could probably hear you snoring from there. Yeah, that is. So as the crow flies, no, I shouldn't give that, but I know right where that is. Um, it is 
from where I sit right now, it's a 40 minute drive of 26 miles. I, I feel like that's in your snoring blast radius. I just wanted to put that in your radar. Don't want you to get murdered. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. Us, us newsmen have to stick together. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to hire somebody to watch the house at night, I think. Although if you did get murdered, it would be good for business for me. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that is true. On I top bet of you there would be a, another download, uh, another subscription spike for the, the Patreon too. Oh yeah, I mean, I would get a lot more work, and you know, a free story to report on. I.e., your death. Well, this has been fun. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure. Uh, this has been today's installment of Droopy's Bad News. All right. There he goes, just fucking shaking his sassy ass at me as he walks out the door. He's always doing he that. saunters in and then saunters Rancing. out. Yeah. Oh, cool. Now he's taking a shit. All right. <laughs> Could have just walked three more feet and done that outside, but nope, right by the door. Cool. Thanks, Droop. Yeah, he, he texted me and... I thought that was uh, very pertinent information that he had to get on and do a special bulletin and warn the Puminati that if they're thinking about taking Ozempic for weight loss, they're they're playing with molten fire coming from playing an anus. Fire. Yep. Diarrhea, my friends. Make, Diarrhea. Make your butthole tingle. Yep. Singe. I mean, if you think about it, what Droopy said the lawsuit going against Ozempic, it's only, you know, the diarrhea queen and 12 other people. So it seems like the odds are in your favor, but you should know, you know, you don't want to, you want to be fully informed. Sometimes there are consequences and those consequences include pissing out of your ass. Uh, Jeff, it's, it's been a minute. But I feel like you have been, you've kind of been like smoking Shuddy and I every time we try to trip you up with like intelligence related shit. So I don't know if you want to keep your hot streak going and take another crack at it and potentially giz in mine and Shuddy's face once again with a little um, bit of uh, Jeff Cabulary. We have time to kill, so I feel like we sh- we got to do something, right? Yeah. I feel like you shouldn't phrase it like that. We have time to kill. Like, we need to do this in order to, to stretch this out as long as possible. No, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not ready to end the show yet, and I don't really want to do voicemails, and I don't have a better idea, so well, I'm fucking game. Yeah, yeah. We, we learned recently that um, <laughs> the, I guess our Google Voice line got fucking snipped right yeah so in october it looks like that's when the cutoff was and uh yeah anybody that's been trying to call we didn't do it (laughs) yeah i don't know i don't know what happened i know that's that google voice was associated with an old email account but i mean we had that fucking thing going for well over a decade and it's just gone. I can still access it. There's I mean, some old old voicemails we haven't played that I can that we'll 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 play one day, but we might have to set up a new one just to keep it going. Yeah, I don't want to lose more voicemails forever. It's funny too, so. because after all those years, I um I never actually memorized the phone number. I always had to read it off the cheat sheet. I have it saved in my phone. That's the only reason I know it. Yeah. But uh Jeff, I, I forget what, what we officially landed on, because we were calling it like Jeff Cabulary, Jeff Lingo, and someone in the Puminati suggested something that was like, fuck, it was right there all along. I got it. What was Ginger, it? right? He he uh, he, he uh, suggested Jeffinitions, right? Is that what it was? Oh, Jeffinitions? It, it was Jeffinitions. Yeah. So if it's that, if that was... I think you, it was Ginger. If, if, if it wasn't, I apologize to... Um, who I who I missed uh, giving credit to. Yeah. So basically, the the way this game works is I text Jeff a word, and whether he knows it or not, he has to use it in a sentence that proves he knows the definition. 
So like he can't just say like, you know, uh, uh, all I'm looking at is these words in front of me, and I don't want to blow them. Yeah, don't, let's say don't let's say dictionary. That. If Jeff can't just say, "Oh, dictionary is a word that exists," it has to be used uh, grammatically to to prove knowledge of the actual word. Gotcha. It has to be used contextually. Contextually. There Thank we go. you guys. All right. Yeah, give it to me. Your first me word, word is contextually. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm going to text it to you right now. Oh, look, there's all the Swedish words. So, the word Jeff has to use in a sentence is aphrodisiac. I think he'll be able to do it. Shuddy, do you think he'll be able to do it? Yes. Uh, okay. Might be a long sentence. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of fat, so one of my aphrodisiacs is homemade pasta sauce. And okay. homemade pasta sauce okay. gives me a boner. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I that that was I, that was going to be my follow up. Explain how you're using yeah. that. Because, yeah, yeah. I yes. put a pasta sauce in my nipples. It gets me hard. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for some people it's like uh oysters for jeff it's any food <laughs> it's yeah it could be it could be ragu really it doesn't have to be that good of pasta sauce it doesn't have to be rouse oh even sore strumming gave me a boner kind of smells like ass that's hot aphrodisiac i didn't i don't think i could have sp- spelled that though without seeing it yeah that's... you should before you you should let him try and pronounce it before you I mean, I kind of figured aphrodisiac was going to be a given, but I could be wrong. All right. I'll, uh, next All right, I'll word. I'll pronounce the word first, then I'll try to use it in a sentence. Okay. Next word. Just came down the pike. Myriad. All right. Um, this is a tricky one. It's tricky to the point where if Jeff comes close, I don't think I'll be able to weigh one way or the other if he was truly correct in its usage. But... It's like versatile. It's like it's like um there's a myriad of different ways to solve this problem. There's a lot of different ways to solve a problem. Ooh, look at the, the problem, big brains on Jeff. <laughs> All right. I, that that counts as far as I'm concerned. Shuddy, are you are you satisfied? I am satisfied because it means a great number. So yes, a lot qualifies as a synonym. Uh, for Many, if you will. <laughs> Innumerable, even. Mm. Man, look at these fucking brainiacs I got to deal with on a daily basis, huh? All right. And your face, Troopy. I just sent your third word. Uh, <clears throat> fortuitous. It's like, it's you now. You now have good luck. You're now a fortuitous man. Especially after landing that uh, cameo. Right? I think yeah, I'll allow I'm... it. Right, Shuddy? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a very great sentence, but I think it works. Yeah. What world are we in? And living in where Kevin's fortuitous. It's taken years to get there. Yeah, what wor- world are we living in where Jeff can use fortuitous in a sentence? <laughs> Did we cross into the bizarro I've been, land? I've been, I've been reading the dictionary just waiting for this <laughs> bit to be fired up again. I actually pulled I have a one Billy, right next to my bed. I pulled a Billy Madison and I re-enrolled myself in first grade. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I'm on fire. I look like a fucking genius right now. Yeah, three for three. All right. You're, yeah, you're bringing the heat today. Fourth word has just been sent to the group chat. Vernacular. I think I know. Uh, it's just like, to me, it's like a fancy word for vocabulary. So like, maybe this bit has shown that I have a pretty good vernacular. Uh, so let's get the definition right. 
it's basically just language. Of so a, it's not of a specific place, region, or country. So it's like sl- slang can be considered vernacular when you're mm-hmm. in, you know, like using if you're in New York City and you're using New York City slang, and you're speaking with the vernacular of the area. So vocabulary isn't far off. It's yeah. a little, it's a little bit more broad than the actual word means, but I'll allow it. All right. It wasn't in the ballpark. Yeah, you were in the ballpark and you used it in a sentence that made sense. Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, I went and saw a lady of the night and the condom broke and now my penis has vernacular. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Vernacular is one of the scariest dinosaurs ever. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to do some bird watching for my window, so I pulled out my vernaculars and looked through them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right word number five nuance it's just like nuance how do i use this i mean i know what it means uh it's like an intricate detail of something like um hmm when discussing the second coming of john cooper kevin mention the nuances of filmmaking or discuss the f- nuances of filmmaking. I'm going to use discuss twice in the same word, but, or the same sentence, but nuance, just like details, little details. Eh, not exactly. Well, when he said, no, I, I think it, I mean, a subtle distinction or variation, a subtle quality. He did. I think he saved it at the end when he said the fine details. Because it's it's a slight variation. I so feel confident I could use it in a sentence if need be. If if it, well, I mean, it applied to sports betting, give it a shot and, and apply it to um, pubic hair. <laughs> well, no, pubic hair nuance. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can get there. Hold on. <laughs> I believe in you. I think you could do it. You think I know what herring means? There's, a, I have a very nuanced way of shaving my ball hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Since you put it that way, <laughs> I think we, I think we have no choice but to accept it. <laughs> okay, uh, I lost count. Word number six. Oh my god! I don't. <laughs> I don't think I could say this one. Incongruous. Incongruous. No, I can't say it. I can't fucking say it. It's just like inconsistent. It's it's inconsistent. It's um, incongruent. I can't pronounce it right. So how can I use it in a sentence? Use it in a sentence that involves diarrhea. <laughs> uh, my regular poop comes out incongruous, incongruously, but. Diarrhea is just a steady stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fractured. Great it's sentence, like, but not not contextually accurate. How? How do you say it? I, I'm I'm fucking up with this word. I can't I can't say it. You I'm said it right like the first fuck. time. Incongruous. Incongruous. And yeah, I mean, it's. I think I think it's like a synonym for inconsistent or like disjointed incompatible not harmonious Uh, so you could say having explosive diarrhea is incongruous with having a house full of people yeah okay that was a good usage shuddy thank you yeah that was was impressive nice all right here comes word seven (laughs) arbitrary um, 
I think you will know this one because of sports. Yeah, because of baseball, because of arbitrary hearings. All right, well, that's not fair. So you can't use it in a sentence about baseball. You have to use arbitrary. <laughs> that time Derek Jeter went to arbitration. <laughs> uh, fuck. Yeah, what, what should arbitrary. he? What's the subject he should relate it to, Shuddy? Arbitrary. Um, nutting. Okay. Arbitrary coming. I'll, I'll, I'll jerk off to sexually arbitrary subjects like home and garden magazines. I think we got to give it to him. I had to put sexually as like an adverb there to kind of make it make sense. But <laughs> I think I got there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That counts. <laughs> Oh man, I've been looking forward to this one. Hold on. So, what's okay. the official definition? I, I my guess is, I think I used it in a sentence, but the arbitrary the definition arbitrary. It's like, uh, it's, it's like just not like, relating to the subject. Like it's like in the, almost like a hmm. based on randomness. Yeah, like a by middle ground, almost determined by individual preference or convenience rather than by necessity or intrin or the intrinsic nature of something. Okay. That's according to Merriam Webster. Yeah. He's a huge sludge. Yeah. Fucking gun. <laughs> All right. Here's word number eight, I think. Modicum? Hmm. I think it's like really, it's like a, it's a synonym for like really small. I think. I don't really know that word. I don't know if I've ever really used a modicum. So, like, I think being that it's right there in the word, you should relate a sentence of <laughs> modicum with cum. <laughs> I put a, <laughs> I, I nutted a, a, a modicum of giz on on this lady's tits. <laughs> oh, Whoops! No, that was for that lady's tits. Uh, <laughs> I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Uh, as will I. As will I. <laughs> Your definition was also correct, Jeff. I dropped a nice. modicum of cum on my turn. It's been a long time toilet. since I put up a 30 in the uh, SAT verbal. That's right. Out of 800, I got a 30. <laughs> Ooh. Misspelled my name. Ooh. It's rough. I was, as I was about to um, pull up the next word, got an email. Contract is signed. I didn't shoot myself in the foot, guys. Look at that. Woo! Look at that right fucking here. Good Mr. Lucky. Kevin Kraft. Mr. Just Lucky. Fucking, 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 fucking Kevin Kraft. Yeah. Yeah! Fucking, just pulling his dick out and waving it in everybody's face. Fucking Chody Foster over here. Yeah. Taking a victory lap. <laughs> Check out. You say Chody? Nice. I did. I have been... I have been sitting on that all episode waiting for a chance to throw that out there. I thought of it yesterday. I was like, I need to use it somewhere. Chody like, Foster. <laughs> Chody waiting. Foster needs to be, she needs to be signed by the MSPH wrestling commissioner. She oh needs, my God. Chody Foster needs an appearance at the next MSPH wrestling. Yeah. How about, how about being that I, I look um, like a gay woman. I could. Oh wait, no. You're the bush here. I look like a lesbian. I was gonna say I could fight Chody Foster for the chance at Hannibal Lecter, but Dom has already made it clear the game does not allow um, men to fight women. He would just have to create you as a woman. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah, sweet burn on Chody Foster. Uh, that was pretty sick. All right, here is oh, one more word, definition. Jeff. Um, paradox. Yeah, let's make oh. this the last one. Paradox. Um, it's like an exaggerated version of something, almost like a parallel. Um, but like, can't use the word in the definition. Um. Yeah, think about um, a gangbang. Think about yourself. Think about yourself. 
paradox, paradox. How do I use this in a sentence? Definition paradox. It's just like. I was bringing my boat into the marina and squeezed it right in between a paradox. (laughs) (laughs) That's a way better guess than whatever I'm going to have. Yeah, like a paradox. Uh, It's almost like an alternate reality. (sighs) Paradox, paradox. I'm struggling here, fellas. The... Yeah, I'm I'm going to fucking, I'm going to cop out. My life is a paradox of, of shitty horror movie. Mm. I think I used it right, but it's a cop out. Not, What's the definition? Help me out here. I mean, the, the true definition is um, yeah. a seemingly absurd or self-contradictory statement or proposition that when investigated or explained may prove to be well-founded or true. So, so that, like an exaggerated alternate state almost? Is that, is that was my first guess kind of right or no? I mean, the, the, the example sentence that they provide from Oxford is, in a paradox, he has discovered that stepping back from his job has increased the rewards he gleans from it. So it's almost like the opposite outcome you think? Yeah, one such as a person, situation, or action having seemingly contradictory qualities or phases. Yeah, this is more uh, literary writing. This this is not something I would use in sports betting. Probably not. It's a little out of my wheelhouse um, here. I mean, you could. I mean, if I were a better writer or smarter, maybe, but I'm not. I mean, so. you could use a paradox kind of to describe the Dallas Cowboys regular season versus the thumping they took by the Green Bay mm. Packers. Yeah. Oh, was I was okay. I correct in any of my predictions? I don't remember what you predicted, to be honest. You picked a, a line. To no, be, did you? No, we that talked about it. We, we talked about it. Um, I think off the air prior to Queef or No Queef. Oh, really? That Kevin, that Kevin went two for two in the games that happened already, and he should have known the answers to, but picked both Monday night winners correctly with the Bills and the Buccaneers. So, I mean, we know that Kevin didn't actually pay attention to football, so he's technically 4-0, right? Yeah. Well, he didn't pick any games for this week. Right, because yeah. they hadn't happened yet. Uh, like they hadn't been the final games hadn't yeah. been set. But is there any fun stuff coming up that I can predict? There are. Yeah. There's Sick. the championship games, which are the uh, for the NFC. It's the Detroit Lions taking on the San Francisco 69ers, um, and then the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Kansas City Queefs. Ooh. Can't wait for you to get there. I can't wait yeah. to hear how you get there on these picks. Yeah, because I'm not going to go my usual route of f- making the mascots fight each other. I think. Okay, so with the limited amount of sports ball knowledge that I have, just based on people that have been in my life, I do know that the Lions are usually a very, very shitty team, right? Uh, yeah. This is the first time they've been in a championship game since 1991. So who are the Lions Am fighting for... again? The 69ers. No, I think it's been 69ers. A lot. Okay. I think it's been a lot longer than that. I was like, glad they there in the playoffs. Oh, was it? They've never made it this far in, in, the, in the playoffs in the Super Bowl era, I don't think. So with my... Super sports ball brain. They made the NFC championship in 1991. Okay, my bad. So they lost to the Redskins? 41 to 10. Right. I th- I'm, I'm smelling upset. I think the Lions are going to continue their um, unseasonable hot streak. Wait, do you know I the spreads? So. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Okay. Four. You, you think an upset? It's seven, but okay. Yeah. 
That was my second guess. But yeah. Um, yes. Mind in an upset like it. Yep. And then I also think that <clears throat> I think the sports universe is so mad that they always show Taylor Swift at the games that that anger is going to fuel the queefs to another win, thus upsetting all of the real sports ball people. So you think it's in, the Super Bowl is going to be the queefs and the lions? Yeah, bunch of queef and lions. That's by far your best sports breakdown ever. Because you. you were right; they're both under. You picked both underdogs, and you had no idea who was favored. Toasty. So you got lucky, but you're right. <laughs> I mean, okay. When do they? When do they fight? I mean, play. Sunday. Fun. Yeah. Oh, so that's a while away. And I got the I got the Lions covering, and I got the Ravens winning and covering. So does nobody play tonight? Because it's Monday. Nope. Games are mm-hmm. all over. Basically, it's three. Yeah, there's three more games this year. Two oh. in the conference championship this Sunday, and then the Super Bowl. So this decides who goes to the Super Bowl, and then yes, sir. how many weeks off do they get before the Super Bowl happens? One. That's then it. We have the Pro Bowl games the week after. Holy shit! What happens at the Pro Bowl? Is that like the All Stars? Like they just pick a bunch of good people and put them on a team together? So that's how it used to be, and they would play a game. And it started, the game used to be played in Hawaii after the Super Bowl. Then they moved it to the week between the championship games and the Super Bowl. Nobody really wanted to play in it. So now it's just skills competitions. And then there's like a celebrity kind of flag football game. Oh, I was just going to say that. They should do it like in fucking Happy Gilmore. And put like um, uh, Taylor Swift's husband with like, Drew Carey. No, oh, the pro ams. Yeah, <laughs> they, just, they had a pro am last this past week and uh, for for golf, and and they're gonna do one in a couple weeks, a big one up in up in Pebble Beach. No There'll shit. be some actual stars. The pro am this past week was mostly just like it was like professional golfers and like CEOs or like rich businessmen who could pay for charity or whatever, pay the charity, but like there'll be stars at the next pro am. That'd be funny to see, like, they make a team out of, like, um, like Pauly Shore, um, Corbin Burnson, Michael Bolton, and then it's just, like, a whole bunch of pros on the other team. <laughs> and it's like Johnny Knoxville trying to return a kick against USC. Yeah. You remember that one? Yep. Just fucking kills. God. It's one of the more dangerous things he's ever done. Yeah. Knoxville, he always got it the worst, man. He's the biggest G out of all those guys. Uh, I mean, that's saying a lot, but he, he, he definitely carried his weight. I mean, I'll always go to bat for fucking Danger Aaron. He's like the most under, unappreciated jackass guy. Yeah, they did a stunt sure. where they tied a, a a string around his tooth and then tied it to Bam's Lamborghini, had him peel out. It ripped his tooth out to the point where instead of pulling it straight down, it pulled it out on an angle. And the oh. root s- cracked his skull. So not a, not only did it pull a fucking fresh adult tooth out of his head, it cracked his skull in the process, and they left it on the cutting room floor and didn't even put it in the movie. Yeah, he's a fucking G. Him, him and Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville once a jackass movie will do something no one will is willing to. Yeah. And Danger Aaron's kind of of that same milk, but he doesn't. He like you said, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves for it. Well, but he those... gets forced into it too. Like they never. It, Johnny Knoxville puts himself in that situation, and then they <laughs> put Aaron, Aaron in those situ like in the last movie with the fucking bear. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah that the was best great. one wasn't even like a dangerous one in the sense like it, or, or no, it wasn't physically dangerous. Stop- the fast pitch softball at his nuts. The one with uh, the super troopers dude with the, the, the taxi driver, he gets kidnapped. That was, I mean, was, was that jackass too? I think that was like the funniest bit they ever did. You remember what I'm talking about? Which one was it? Where he gets, or Jay, uh, what's his name? Jay Sandercar. Oh, right? Jay from, Chand- from super Chandra Sekar. Yeah. 
he plays like the cab driver yeah. and they kidnap him or whatever. Yeah, they kidnap they... Danger Aaron, put him in the fucking trunk. Yeah, they're, they're, like, they're like, yeah, we're going to prank this this cab driver. So we're going to glue this fake beard on you and make you look like a terrorist. And you just scare the cab driver. And meanwhile, they're like, hey, he's going to try and scare you. So fuck him up and put him in the trunk. And then like the, the roles get reversed. He's pleading for his fucking life. They let him out. And they're like, oh, by the way, that's all pubes that are that are um, glued to your face. That's not a fake beard. And one of the people we shaved has crabs. <laughs> <laughs> there's like so many layers of fucked up to it it's yeah. so good <laughs> uh well anyway <laughs> hey that's an episode so ladies and gentlemen of the Puminati, thank you guys so much for listening thank you for your support and if you truly want to help the homies out and um keep the furnace of msph going please check out our patreon patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour there are Man, I was trying to come up with stats, and I got overwhelmed. Like, we're about to record our 311th, shout out to Dom, uh, Patreon show today. 311. Um, we've got, like, I think over 80 episodes of Queef or No Queef, 60-something episodes, maybe, of supermarket queefs, like 250 snack attacks. Shuddy and Dom have done 104 or 105. What the fuck did I just watch? No, 104. We're going to be recording 105 next week. Cabin Fever starring Ryder Strong. Ooh, Cabin Fever is a good movie. That's what Dom <laughs> just wants to watch it. That's Dom's in Dom, it, to Dom. I believe he is on record as that's a five dicker. Hmm. Uh, I don't know yeah. about that, but it's a sick movie. He pinged me on Slack and told me he did not like Starsky and Hutch, or didn't think it was a five dicker. <laughs> I don't remember what he if he scored it, but not a fan. I was disappointed. Yeah, I've I've done over two hundred episodes of Kevin's Nerd Hole, um, tons of between two flushes. It's it's like impossible to keep track of the stats, but there is so much fucking stuff there, and uh, would mean a lot to us if you signed up. If you're on the fence, give it a shot. Take it for a trial run. See what we're working with, because I think you're going to enjoy it. Jeff and I are also doing another episode of Dragon Ball Queef, uh, the the show where I make Jeff watch the first episode of an anime series, and then we kind of do a book report on it. So a lot of fun stuff, a lot of variety. Uh, we work really hard at it, so it would be nice if you guys checked it out. It'd mean a lot. Patreon.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. You can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeff R. Records at MSPH Podcast, and at John Cooper Movie. Don't forget to watch Dustin Ibarra, the great Dustin Ibarra, do stand-up on The Tonight Show Wednesday of this week. It's a big deal. Really happy for him. So every extra view from the Puminati. I know we're not many, but we are mighty. So every little extra bump that they get from having Dustin on is worth it. Uh, also, we're, we're growers, not showers. <laughs> Uh, check out Jeff's sports betting podcast, Outkick Bets with Jeff Clark. We'll yeah, see if my predictions are right. NFL podcasts. Um, did an NBA podcast today, though. I'll be ramping up the NBA podcast now that football season is pretty much in the rear view. I crush it this football season, dude. i probably going to finish with a 60% winning rate, which is fucking, like, really good. Really, really good. So, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the whole NFL season. Hopefully I can have the same luck at the end of the NFL or at the end of the NBA season here and uh, also doing some golf podcasts. So yeah, check it out in the Outkick Bets podcast feed. Nice. And if you would like to see our feed, uh, oh, sorry, almost barf. The MSPH feed, that is, youtube.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. Uh, every subscription like thumbs up all that shit all helps i don't know we're all at the mercy of the algorithm here but hey thanks again for listening and until next time something